So good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the webinar on big data stack technologies for shipping. Um, it's two o'clock now, so we are uh, starting. But we would like to give uh, participants a few more minutes to uh, to join. So we'll give them two more minutes, and then we will start. So welcome to those who have joined uh, the webinar. We are giving people to join a few, uh, one more minute, uh, so that they can also listen to what uh, the presenters have to say about the big data stack uh, use case on shipping. So a few seconds more and then we'll start. So let's start. So welcome everybody to the second webinar of Big Data Stack. Uh, I hope you can all see my screen. Um, so I'm Marik Willems, I'm project manager at Trust IT Services and we are leading uh, the dissemination and uh, work package of uh, the Big Data Stack projects. Uh, in this context, we are organizing uh, three um, uh, webinars on the big data stack use cases. So here you can have a quick overview of the uh, use cases we are developing in big data stack. So big data stack is developing a holistic stack for uh, big data applications and operations, but more about that uh, in the following presentations. This is just to give you an overview of how we implement these, uh, these technologies into real uh, use cases. Uh, and today it's all about the real-time ship management. So these are our speakers. Uh, so let me give you a short introduction of each of them. So uh, Demosthenes Kiriasis is an assistant professor at the University of Piraeus. He holds a PhD in the area of service-oriented architectures with a focus on quality aspects and workflow management. His expertise lies with service-based distributed and heterogeneous systems. And Demos has participated and coordinated several European-funded uh, projects focusing uh, his research on issues related to distributed uh, computing architectures, data management and analytics, performance modeling, deployment and management of virtualized infrastructures and platforms. Dr. Statis Blitzus from Danaos uh, is a senior researcher and head of development at Deep Sea Technologies and a proud member of Danaos Corporation. Um, he holds a PhD in operation research and decision support systems and he has worked in many national and European research projects over the past two years. He focused on the Internet of Things, big data optimization and artificial intelligence approaches for the shipping industry. And finally, Dr. Youssef Moati, data services lead and administrative coordinator of the Big Data Stack project. Um, he's researcher at the Haifa IBM Research Labs and we'll discuss the data services for Big Data Stack used for the Big Data Stack shipping use case. So these are our speakers of today, uh, which will um, guide you through all the work that has been done in the Big Data Stack project and um, that is interesting for, for other uses. So uh, the agenda of today is a, a quick poll with four questions. We aim to do this in two minutes with your, uh, with your help. So it would be great if you could answer within each question within 30 seconds so that we can then listen to Demosthenes Kiriasis on the big data stack overview, then Statis Splitsos the, on the Danaos real-time shipping, and then Yusuf Mati on big data stack data services overview. 
Um, then we have time for questions and answers, which we are, uh, welcome, uh, in which we will welcome you to um, to ask our speakers questions, um, ask challenges that you are uh, facing in your own organizations that might be interesting uh, for big data stack technologies. Um, so now I would get, like to give the floor to Demosthenes. Uh, sorry, the poll. Uh, Andrea, can you um, can you launch the poll because we would really like to have some insights uh, from from our our attendees of the webinar. Yes, Mark, I'm going to launch it right now. So we want we are going to give um, a very short time to people to answer those questions. So I will say just 30 seconds. It will be enough. They are short, very short. So please, everyone, uh, be quick in giving other pies. Thank you. So let's go with the first one. So the question is, are you working yeah. with big data? Yeah. Yeah. I'm closing. Perfect. Okay. So many of you uh, work with big data. Let's move to the second question. We have five ones. So other 30 seconds, please. So this question are is, are you working? Sorry. In the shipping Andrea, tech system. No, thank you. Okay, 10 more seconds. Fantastic, so the third question. Interested in big data technologies to optimize costs on maintenance, spare parts, inventory planning, and dynamic filtering. Okay. Another question. We are getting there. This is the fourth. So, what is the main risk of fear preventing you from undergoing a big data analytics project? Okay, and the last one. So are you interested in using the big data stack technologies? Shall we get back to you with our offering? Okay, 10 seconds more, and then we have done. So thank you, Marik. Uh, we have just closed the polls. Please go ahead. OK, thank you. Um, so now it's time for um, for Demos to give uh, an overview of the Big Data Stack project. So Andrea, could you give him the presentation rights, please? Here we are. Okay, so can you hear me? I guess yes, okay. Uh, so good afternoon. I will briefly guide you through the big data stack project and you know, give an overview of what we're doing before we uh, focus on the ship management and the shipping scenario. Um, so let me start by the why. So why are we doing the project and what can we, can we offer? So one thing to take into consideration is that uh, there are many different data sources that generate data in a different way. So the, the data sources, each data source generates the data sets. These are generated in different arrays and in different places. So we need to take account of that. And not only that, it's also that the processing of the data doesn't always happen um, as the data are generated. So there are different rates of generation and then there are different processing rates so there could be data that are aggregated and are 
uh, processed afterward that could be data that are uh, processed as they are generated. There could be data that are historical data and need to be combined with um, real-time facts. So one thing to take into consideration and one key motivation was that. Um, now the second aspect has to do with applications. If you move into the application space, that means that applications are not monolithic anymore. So there are applications that have different components, so you know, it's one application that has several components, and not only that, applications and application components uh, come along with um, data analytics. So the typical scenario nowadays is that you have an application that has several components, and along with them, you have data which could be um, a data application. Oh, sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, Dinos, but uh, you have a ver very poor quality in audio. Can you do something to improve it, please? Uh, I can try. Is it better now? Okay. Uh, a little bit, yes. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, I was saying that applications um, are, are non monolithic anymore. They consist different application components, and not only that, we have them, let's say, not alone. So there are analytical pipelines, meaning that, for example, we need to aggregate data from different sources, we need to store this data, then we need to process the data, and at the end, this is part of an overall application scenario. Uh, so I think to consider here is how do we manage such data analytics pipelines, what do we do uh, with them? So, and not only that, you know, we say that nothing is written in stone at the end, even if you provide the virtual machines, even if you provide the resources, um, if you manage the data pipelines and the compost applications, still uh, changes occur during that time. And these changes may be changes on data sources, new data sources or different rates, uh, could be changes on the data, where are these data stored, if there are in data lakes or if there are in databases, etc. Changes on resources, additional resources that might be needed. So there are many changes for which we need to account. This is an extra channel. Um, architecture is architecture that comes with different paradigms. These architectures may not have the same need to address many actors. So there are, there are business analysts that you know think very high level in the stack and they want to, to do and you know describe the future flow. But they just have scientists that aim at the data. There are people that deal with the data per se, I mean the data. Per Data stores or the data manager. Um, there are people that there are actors that are users, and so on and so forth. So, a challenge is how do we couple um, the requirements and the solutions for all these different actors that are involved in the um, data lifecycle? Uh, last but not least, this openness and extensibility. One key motivation for big data stack is that whatever we are doing is extensible. Um, to different solutions. So it's not, you know, creating an architecture or creating an algorithm or creating a solution that is linked to one specific scenario or one use case that can be extended to different application domains, different use cases, different scenarios. Um, in this scope, what I would propose, you have five main pillars and five main key offerings. Uh, let me start from the, you know, top left corner. The baseline and the backbone of what we are doing is the so-called data-driven infrastructure management. Um, so on the bottom, level for infrastructure providers who are providing solutions that allow for management of the infrastructure based on data aspects, whether these are data rates or data analytics or data management in general, um, different things. Now, you know, going a bit up in the stack on the top right corner, you see data as a service. So for data providers, for decision makers, for whoever wants to do um, analytics and management on the data, uh, we provide um, data as a service solution, a full solution uh, addressing their needs. Uh, process modeling and optimization addresses the, the act of, uh, you know, the business actor, so it's a business analyst that would like to describe the business workflow and based on that, perform the analytics. And on the application dimension of Workbench is a solution aiming for application developers on how they can estimate the resource needs for different applications. Uh, finally, what you see in the very um, middle of the picture, the data toolkit, um, it is the tool for data scientists and practitioners that allows them 
to their analytics tasks, to run their analytics tasks um, on top of the provided infrastructure. Uh, now, how do we deliver these offerings? We we'll just pick some points. The, the full process starts from the right corner, the process modeling. This is the tool that is provided to them. Um, business people that are able to interact with you. So, in the case of management, this would mean that I would like to obtain data from a seed, from a person. I would like to obtain more data and then, uh, you know, do a prediction about potential faults or errors. Um, and according to that, it would predict maintenance. So, this is a high level business workflow that doesn't need directly specific um, databases to where these databases are located, to which algorithm it executes. Something that can be executed uh, on that. Demos, we have a tool. Sorry, Demos, sorry again. I'm so sorry to butt in, but I had to ask you again to uh, try a way to improve your quality. I think it's an issue with your connection. Could it be? Sorry, I can hear just wind, noise, but not your voice. Is it better now? Uh, can you try, try to solve, please? Well, maybe a little bit. What about now? Yeah, the final three better. Thank you. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I was I was in the data toolkit. Um, so the data toolkit. Gets us input what is the output of the process modeling, which the business work. And then, based on that, uh, um, it grounds the process to something that can be executed on the infrastructure um, to, to assist this process and to assist the to potential executables. Um, then through the toolkit, the data scientists can ingest their own algorithms. They can link, uh, like for example, the retrieval of data to specific databases, or the retrieval of weather data, for example, in the case of ship management. And then at the end, the data toolkit uses something which we call a playbook. It is something that can be directly um, deployed and executed on the infrastructure. Of course, over there, there is a key question. How much resources shall the infrastructure provide to this analytic pipeline? And for that, we have the dimension workbench. So the dimension workbench performs an analysis uh, using neural networks on the different services of a workflow and estimates the required resources, which are thereafter uh, provided by the bottom end layer, which is the data driven infrastructure management solution um, of big data stack. Um, it includes approaches about deployment patterns and how deployments should be made, about runtime monitoring and monitoring not only of resources and of applications, but also of data operations uh, like queries, etc. And then, you know, runtime adaptations to ensure that, you know, whatever changes during runtime we take into consideration. I'm not getting into details about the different data stores we are supporting and the seamless data analytics framework and in general data as a service, because this will be covered in detail later on um, by one of, of the colleagues. Uh, so, who is behind It's a big consortium. It's led by IBM Hive 18, so we're halfway and still we have another 18 years to go. So, thank you very much. I think we're passing to, to Stafis, our producer from the North. Thank you. Thank you, Demos. I'm going to pass the presentation to Statis. So here we are. Statis, I think you have to enable your microphone. Yes, yes, I've already done that. Let me just put my slides on presentation mode. Thank you. Can you see my screen? 
Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, so uh, I'll just give you a brief description of what we wish to do through Big Data Stack. Uh, our case is uh, the real-time ship management. Um, so. Excuse me, I'm having uh, a bad time with PowerPoint. I, I feel that Murphy is against us today. Okay, um, can, can you hear me? Can you see my screen again? Yep. Okay, about the now shipping, uh, we're a leading international maritime player. Um, one of the biggest ship owning companies uh, with 60 container ships and transport millions of containers, sailing millions of miles to thousands of ports and consuming millions of tons of fuel oil. Um, What we wish to do through big data stack, um, suppose the following scenario. A vessel has to complete its route within a time frame. If the main engine part fails unexpectedly, uh, the ship risks uh, going off higher, and this can be very damaging to the shipping company since chartering revenues decrease. It's very bad for the company image, uh, while replacing the spare part immediately increases cost. So. The identification of potential failures allows to timely order the spare parts and replace it before it breaks down. Um, the thing is that discussing about malfunctions in general in a vessel's engine room is uh, something like a joke. There are many things that can go wrong. So we focus on a specific malfunction of the main engine, uh, which is, a no is not a sudden event. It evolves gradually. It can be detected only with an onboard inspection. Uh, we don't know yet um uh, the correlation of metrics that could pinpoint it so looking over the data at the moment is not very helpful for us uh and uh, it occurs on crosshead bearings i will uh, describe what uh, the crosshead bearings are later uh, we know the main the main cause uh it's slow steaming which leads to bad lubrication of the cylinder components um, and we wish to identify this case early on um Furthermore, we strongly believe that the wear of this bearing as a physical phenomenon should be somehow hidden in the data. The issue is that we, we don't know yet where it is hidden. Uh, so um, these two pictures, uh, one on the left, shows um, uh, how a cylinder look, looks like. And you can see the crosshead bearing in, in the middle of the, of the, of the picture. This is badly lubricated and um, uh, worn off uh, due to uh, the slow stemming policy, uh, which uh, on the right side of, uh, on, on the right photo of this slide, you can see an article from Sea Trade Maritime News explaining what slow stemming is. Uh, it's, um, it's a policy imposed by charters to ship owners saying that uh, you have to reduce speed. The thing is that uh, main engines uh, work optimally at a specific speed and above. And if you go below that speed, you end up uh, wearing the machine down. Uh, this policy is something that uh, is happening um, many years now. and. Uh, uh, will continue to happen since it's one of the practices that uh, will be um, used to reduce uh, carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, um, following that, the technical challenges that we have uh, to, to deal with is that the main engine posing the highest risk consists of various spare parts depending on many parameters. So it is difficult, difficult to accurately predict the failures uh, um, data loss may occur due to broken sensors on board and uh, the identification of the malfunction pattern um, seems to be data intensive and computationally demanding. 
the operational challenges that we face is that if a false alarm uh, occurs, uh, the operating costs increase um, and uh, you know, ordering unnecessary, sp uh, unnecessary spare parts is not optimal. Additionally, the multivariate nature of the supply department makes the selection of the port challenging since uh, the price depends on the port, the time frame of the order and the required personnel to replace this part. Um, what data are to be used uh, for this case? Uh, operational data, uh, we call them telegrams, it's uh, reports, known reports, master's reports and so on, uh, which are sent every 12 hours or upon arrival departure of the vessel and they're rarely updated, especially when, uh, when an error is identified. Um, we have general purpose sensor data from sensors on board, 21 different sensors, uh, which adds up to 29 million records, uh, and this is on a per minute basis. And uh, main engine sensor data uh, from 100 different sensors, adding, to, adding up to 29 million records on a per minute basis, again. Uh, um, the big data stack added value on what we wish to do. Um, so far, we have uh, utilized uh, the complete environment of, of big data stack. Um, the functionality bringing key added value is, uh, is, the, is the following. First, um, we get to have real-time stream processing to identify sensor malfunction and violation of specified conditions by the distributed complex event processing component. Um, we're talking about um, processing stream of streams of data on board um, to identify uh, malfunctions on the sensors. And once this data get on shore, we get to uh, check for violations of um, specified conditions. For example, the charter party agreement. If the charter party agreement is breached, then um, the ship owner wishes to be uh, alerted uh, on time. Um, furthermore, the preventive maintenance uh, algorithm, uh, which is performed in an efficient way, considering all available data sets by the deployment configurations in the seamless analytics framework. And finally, the enhanced query speed as required by the specific performance constrained by the data skipping technology of big data. Um, furthermore, um, Predictions are based on data of specific quality through sensor malfunctions identification and data quality assessment delivered by big data stack components. Um, we have a high level of flexibility to ingest integrate new algorithms without dealing with the underlying storage mapping and utilization through the big data stack data toolkit. Um, and also, it is seems like, uh, it's uh, seamless, seamless, and uh, of high performance extension. The approach to additional vessels uh, and additional data streams through automated provision and management of infrastructure resources by by big data stack. Uh, so that would be all. I, I hope I was on time. Thank you, Statis. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so now we would, uh, you're very much on time, so that's perfect. Uh, we will now continue with Yusuf Moati. We'll talk about the services in, for the use case. Andrea, can okay. you give? Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Really yeah. Perfect. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Demos uh, gave an uh, overview of the big data architecture. It was uh, unfortunately a bit difficult to, to understand because of the sound quality. However, now we will give an overview of the data services which are in fact directly involved in the in the excuse me directly involved in the implementation of the shipping uh, use case. So now let's have a a short recap of the business goals of the use case. So, uh, as Statis just explained, uh, we 
want to accurately predict specific main engine failure. We also want to be informed, informed of problems as soon as possible. Uh, first, uh, for, first instance, broken sensors. A uh, second example would be infringement of business rules. Uh, by the way, I think uh, somebody would uh, should uh, mute because I I hear a lot of uh, of uh, noise. I'm so, sorry, it's okay. So now and uh, and then. <clears throat> Uh, uh, we should be uh, uh, aware that uh, that this solution should fit future data ingestion rates. As of now, uh, just just one minute. Do, do you hear? Do you hear me? Yes, you have can hear you. Uh, okay, because I I see that the demos is is. Uh, asking if I am if I'm still connected so okay so uh, let's continue uh, yes excuse me so uh, as of as of now uh, we we have uh, uh, IOT data for tens of vessels whereas tomorrow we are aiming at uh, much more thousands of vessels Today, we may have only kilobytes of data per minute, whereas we are aiming at uh, much more. So overall, instead of uh, gigabytes of data per year, which is not big data for now, uh, we should uh, have a solution which uh, can handle tens of terabytes per year, which is something much more serious. So these are the goals. So alerts must be triggered on streaming data, not only after the data has been ingested within the databases. Uh, also, the access to recent data that has been uh, recent, I, for, for our use case, we are speaking of the, the last few months of data, should be highly performant. And also, the data scientists, when they are analyzing the whole data set, uh, which uh, which may not be uh, only in the first database shouldn't mind where exactly the data has uh, is is in is. So these are the constraints on the solution. And here we we start with the high level view of the solution. So you see on the left part uh, that this is the edge. The edge, are, these are the vessels who are emitting the IoT devices and uh, sending the data to the big data stack data center through the gateway. So, uh, first of all, uh, the data will be, uh, will be uh, 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 analyzed by uh, complex event a processing uh, a component which will uh, seek whether uh, specific uh, rules have been infringed. For instance, at the edge, uh, we would like to see uh, whether a, a sensor is broken and therefore uh, giving uh, bad data. Uh, and uh, at, within the data center, we will analyze whether uh, business rules maybe are infringed. For instance, uh, the full consumption per, uh, as as related to the to the speed of the vessel, uh, should be within certain constraints, and this will be analyzed. And if something is bad, then an alert will be uh, marked, and uh, will be detected. Uh, therefore, now the second. Uh, the second big uh, component of our data services is the seamless component. What, what does this mean? This means that we are in this component. We are putting two. Uh, we are putting two uh, databases, two data stores. First of all, we have the Lean Scale database, which is uh, an acid quick uh, uh, database, uh, which is very performant. 
uh, and however it uh, it is limited to a certain number of terabytes it cannot scale indefinitely so uh, the solution that uh, that we present is to federate uh, alongside this uh, database an object store so the object store might be local uh, it might be for instance minio uh, locally or it might even be remote and in fact we have implemented both uh, both cases a local minio or a remote object store for instance the remote ibm cloud object store so this is the seamless component now uh, so as we said the the lean scale database is for the recent data whereas historic data that means data which is older than three or four months are a are in fact a, a put a seamlessly within the object store so now what a, what the, the data scientist may do is either to directly access the lean scale database this also uh, can be done by services such as the uh, data quality assessment which is one of the big data stack uh, data services or uh, by the danos alarm detection daemon and uh, also the data scientists may access directly the object store in the same way now what is what is more interesting is that the data scientist or a data service may access the seamless component and then it doesn't have to know in fact where is the data the data might be on the lean scale database only or it might be federated in in uh, distributed in both uh, uh, object stores uh, the data source sorry now th there is an internal uh, component which which is the data mover, uh, which uh, goal is to seamlessly move historic data slices from le the left side to the uh, to the right side, the object store. In in addition, we have a, a we have implemented what we call the data skipping, which helps at reducing uh, the the amount of data ingested when uh, when uh, running SQL uh, queries against the object store. So instead of having to ingest 100% of the targeted uh, data set, we ingest uh, much less and this uh, permits to accelerate uh, the, the execution of the SQL query. Now I will give uh, I will give now a uh, per component a short explanation, additional exp explanation. So we, are, we have the center of data, which is uh, which goes through the the complex event processing at the, at the edge. Uh, it checks for the basic rules and will add a, an alarm a, an alarm mark for uh, for IoT rows which are uh, which are problematic now all this data is sent uh, to to the data center uh, and uh, <clears throat> once more this uh, this uh, stream of data goes once more through the complex event processing why why is it that we need a new uh, separate component at the data center this is because in fact this uh, component now needs the input from the database, which, which is not possible if you are at the edge. So given this input, uh, this permits additional checks and uh, in fact to detect additional problems which might be uh, marked uh, uh, within the alarm column. After that, data is pushed within the Lean Scale database and the uh, anomalies also are marked within an anomalies table now we have the, the data quality assessment component 
which will ingest from the database the newly pushed uh, IoT data, will analyze it and will push it back where it now adds a data quality column. This column gives, gives an, a, an estimation of the probability that the record is, uh, is valid. So this is very important because it permits to the uh, further components, for instance, machine learning, to have a better appreciation of what should be taken into account. So now we, we, we are uh, running the, we are des describing the preventive maintenance machine learning algorithm, which is uh, in fact predicting the very failures that the studies spoke about previously. So how does it work? It's simply uh, this algorithm uh, reads from the Linscale database uh, the, the new data slices that has been uh, pushed and analyze them and might detect anomalies. In this case, these anomalies will be pushed within the anomaly, anomaly table in the database. And then uh, the next step will be that the, the daemon, which is uh, in fact uh, 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 trying to detect with the, with whether there are, there are problems, will just uh, from time to time uh, read this anomaly table. Now we get to the seamless component. So a seamless component, can you can send to it an SQL query. A very simple example is shown here. So how does it work? The federator will, in fact, push the query to both sides, the lean scale database and the object storage. What is important is that uh, at the object, uh, object store side, we have this uh, data skipping technology, which will permit to accelerate very much uh, in general this, uh, the execution of, uh, of, this, uh, of this query and uh, thus permit even to connect to remote uh, object storage uh, without, uh, without a penalty. So that's it for my uh, overview. Thank you, Youssef. That was very, very nice overview. Um, so now we have come to the part where uh, where we invite participants to uh, to post questions to to Dimas to um, to start this or to Youssef. Uh, maybe you have questions on what they presented. Maybe you have questions on your own challenges. Um, please feel uh, the floor is yours uh, to ask your questions. You can post them in, there's a separate uh, part in the panel, in the dashboard of the, of the webinar where you can pose your questions and we will then uh, read them and, and share them. Any questions on the... On the first part, the overview that Dimas gave, or more into the specifics of the implementation provided by Statis, or more about the specific services used in this use case, given uh, explained by Youssef. Okay, I do have a question um, to the panel. So we've now been talking about the the shipping um, use case, but can these uh, the services also, the, the technologies also be used uh, on other kinds of fleets, uh, different than the maritime one, with different um, specifics. Maybe Yusuf or Statis can can give us a an, explica an explanation on that. <clears throat> yeah, uh, well, the way the way we see it, um, if you break it down to its basic components. Uh, with sensors on board, uh, streams of data, artificial intelligence processing this data and trying to identify malfunctions. Okay, you can you can generalize that and say that okay, in, instead of a vessel, I can have uh, uh, a, a, a machine in, in a factory where I try to identify a specific or a set of malfunctions. So 
we expect that uh, this uh, this approach assisted by the technologies that big data stack offers um, can indeed be transferred into other domains okay thank you that's very interesting can, to, can to i add know. something marika yes of course yusuf please yeah so i fully agree with the uh, the, the answer that the status just gave now i want just to be a bit more specific in terms of data services so uh, among all the data services that uh, we spoke a few minutes ago uh, what should be changed in the case that we would be uh, handling another use case is in fact uh, two two data services first of all the complex event processing would stay the same but uh, other rules obviously should be uh, should be implemented and this is uh, uh, this is in fact uh, quite simple programming and uh, and uh, and you just you just have to to implement these new business uh, rules or new uh, rules which would detect uh, bad sensors etc so this is the first point now the second and obvious point is that uh, we shown the machine learning uh, uh, component which is uh, trying to detect uh, advance of time uh, problems uh, maintenance problems so obviously this should be adapted to whatever new use case would be would have would be implemented apart from this all our infrastructure stays the same so uh, th this was our goal uh, as a project to to uh, provide data services which could be used by uh, by uh, various use cases in the big data use cases and uh, i think we we clearly see that we are approaching our, our goal thank you yusuf so so you you talk about the the whole uh, solution as a, as a package but would there so for example if there are uh, participants in this webinar that are interested in in just elements of this solution would that also be possible to to use the element different the the individual elements from the solutions for specific challenges they see in their own organizations okay so uh, in fact uh, there, there is here as uh, i would say a business question because uh, as as you can see there are uh, there are parts there are services which are uh, which are open source but there are other services such as the uh, lean scale database lean scale is, is a company is a, a small but very uh, successful uh, company uh, the, which uh, uh, this this is a uh, property so uh, so whether or not this will become a, a open source i don't know and uh, this is but uh, there are parts uh, which are not open source. There are parts which are open source. So in fact, it will depend on uh, what uh, service exactly uh, you wish to use. Okay, thank you. Status and uh, Demos, do you want to, to say uh, something about uh, the answer Yusuf gave? Maybe yes, and I'd like yeah. to I'd like to to match it with uh, the previous question because indeed uh, we cannot uh, uh, going a step back to the previous question. I didn't mean that we'll take uh, what we did in big data stack and uh, put it uh, on a different domain and it will magically work. Okay, we have to do indeed do some adaptations, and this is where big data stack. It was one one point, uh, in fact, in my slides that you can change. The, the algorithm. So in the case of uh, uh, moving to um, uh, an, another domain, uh, Big Data Stack allows you to, to adapt, to, to inject your analytics algorithm. Probably this would be the number one adaptation you have to do. Uh, so uh, the thing is that I understand that someone could use individual components of the whole uh, infrastructure to, to achieve um, 
a specific objective, okay, of uh, what um, is to be managed. But so far, I've understood that our whole thing uh, is to to be scalable. So my feeling is that um, um, at least some components uh, do not guarantee the scalability that. Uh, um, the interaction of, uh, of uh, the, the used, the, the set of the used components as a whole uh, provide. Thank you. Thank you. It's... Dimas, do you want to react on that? Do we have Dimas? I think Dimas is suffering as connection issues. Um, that is uh, maybe there are questions from the audience at this point uh, that one that need some answers as well. So everybody who is attending, you are invited to to pose your questions in the question uh, box that you see in your dashboard. Others. Um, so I do have a question, Sadist, for you. Uh, what are the next steps in the use case? We are now halfway uh, we, the project, so, oh, so yes. there, there must we're, be still some we're, steps. We're halfway in this project, and um, there are, there are things to do. Um, uh, thing for sure. Um, one of uh, okay, we've managed to do the first difficult step to um, deliver um, in collaboration with uh, University of Piraeus an analytics algorithm that. Uh, um, can indeed identify malfunctions, the specific malfunction I described in uh, in, in the main engine of a vessel. Uh, so the next steps uh, is uh, to try to include it in the whole requisition process of spare parts. Uh, and uh, why not check if uh, routing or the vessel uh, to the closest port is something that is indeed um, useful. Um, so th th there are two more steps to be done and I assume that there are also some points to be addressed uh, uh, with uh, what is completed so far. Okay, thank you Sadis. Yeah. Any, any questions from the audience? I see. Your explanations have been very uh, complete, so I uh, don't see any more questions. Um, from my side, I wanted to let everybody know that there is a, a third webinar that will take place in September, which will be on our third use case, insurance. Um, so uh, hereby, uh, if nobody else, if uh, Demos, Yusuf, or Satis don't uh, have anything to add, uh, we can hereby give everybody five minutes back of their time and close the webinar. No? Then I would like well, to thank. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to thank you for organizing this whole effort. Uh, I think uh, we did good, and thank you for that. Thanks for all the efforts. Uh, everybody who hasn't done it yet, please read the interview from uh, Professor Varelas from Danaos, expert in the maritime fleet industry. Um, it's a very interesting uh, um, interview where he gives his views on what big data stack can do for the shipping industry. Um, so thank you everybody for joining. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you here and uh, we hope to see you in September. And uh, please keep an eye on our on our events and news as well as we announce uh, where we are and uh, and what we have and what kind of results uh, have come out. So thank you, thank you, Dimas, thank you, Statis, thank you, Yusuf and Andrea. Bye bye. 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 Thank you, Mike.